Today, a long lineage comes to an end. 17 years and several world records since the original Veyron, Bugatti is putting the W16 engine to rest in its road cars, and for its final send-off, they fitted it to a new limited-run hypercar. And this is the, the W16 Mistral, and it's a drop-top two-seater designed to mark the end of Bugatti's run of W16-powered cars. And just look at it, it's got the same running gear as the Chiron, so the same platform, same chassis, same engine, but it's all cloaked in this rather fetching carbon fibre body. Of course, the Chiron's mechanicals are more than up for the job, but for the Mistral, Bugatti has turned up the wick. It gets the uprated 1578 bhp motor from the Chiron Supersport, which powers the Mistral all the way to 261 miles an hour with the roof off. There's even more to come though, because the Mistral will be gunning for the title of world's fastest roadster, and to do so, it'll need to beat the 265 mile an hour Hennessy Venom GT Spider. Next to the Chiron, the Mistral also gets a bespoke aero package and an altered carbon fibre tub to allow for that open air cabin. And by the way, if you want one, well, you're too late. Just 99 will be built and each one has been sold already for 5 million euros a pop. Okay, but this is the important bit. So obviously with the Veyron all those years ago, Bugatti gave us the Grand Sport and the Grand Sport Vitesse. Now they were open top versions of Bugatti's hypercar, but with the Chiron, things were a little bit different. So it was coupe only. Well, until now, in essence, because this Mistral is based on the Chiron, but it's an open top version, cranked all the way to 11 with the Supersport engine. But even though the exterior is a massive departure from the Chiron and closer to other Bugattis like La Voce Noir, the interior is pretty much the same. We don't really mind though, because it's one of the best cabins in the business. Bugatti has kept it simple without resorting to massive digital screens, which they say would date the car in decades to come. As ever, there's a massive range of personalization options, including titanium trim, woven leather, and of course, carbon. The gear lever is bespoke to the Mistral though, with a transparent amber insert which contains an item of the buyer's choosing. But let's step outside for a moment to talk about the geeky stuff with Bugatti's chief designer, Akim Anscheid. Akim, thanks very much for joining us, taking us through the car. Pleasure. Um, so I want to start at the front end because obviously it's quite a big departure from Chiron, isn't it? You've got this new vertical design language. Just talk us through what's going on here. Yeah, if we start from the front, you see quite a bit more presence of this fuselage character, very typical for Bugatti, ending up in this horseshoe grille. In this case, it's quite a bit more wider to get more stands, frontal stands into the car. What you also see is a, a vertical facial ID on the car. It's like a continuation of Devo, if you remember, and Lavatio Noir, and also the Bolit had an identity like this. So it is a modern interpretation of, of those projects as an 8i face, which was so characteristic for the, or is still characteristic for the Chiron. Mm -hmm. If we go around here, you see this, there's an air curtain here on the bottom, but also on the top. So this headlamp architecture is uh, engineering design styling win-win situation where the air is flowing through the headlamp and creating an air curtain, an air volume here, which helps the air that comes from the front being attached then after that onto the car, which leads to better cooling performance on the side of the car. Okay. This um, vertical design language, is this something we could potentially see in future models? Is it going to be more common from Bugatti? It is a, a general strategy that the few of projects, apart maybe from the Cento Dieci, which was obviously an exception, mm -hmm. Uh, for that we hold it that the few of projects have a vertical facial identity and the core product has a horizontal identity in the future okay. as well. Great, great. Let's go around the side okay. then. For us most important is actually the interpretation of the Bugatti line. Uh, actually a Bugatti has a stronger identity from the side due to the Bugatti line than, than actually the front. Uh, right. because it's actually quite a, quite a statement and very unique to the brand. Mm -hmm. So the execution of this line is of utmost importance to us. And in this case, uh, it's very much linked to La Vature Noir, that is totally simple in its development from down here, over there around the air intake, running around this wraparound glass. We call this a visor theme. Yeah. 
And since the top of the monocoque is new anyway for a roadster, uh, we had a chance to really find a different interpretation for the A-pillar. We were not stuck on the Chiron A-pillar and could create a windshield that is as round as possible with the windshield wiper still to work and perform. Okay. So this theme and this Bugatti line interpretation, I think makes the car very clean because it's just one very controlled line. Um, and that adds a certain simplicity to the overall appearance of the car. Okay. So the cooling you can see here, it looks very different to what we've seen on Bugattis in the past. Talk us through the reasoning for this new setup. Yeah, in order to be super clean here, and this is very turbulent air anyway, um, we focused on the cooling performance for the oil cooler mainly to go still into, into this pressure zone from here, the wind traveling along the side glass. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the cooling performance comes through these RAM air intakes, which we thought this was a nice way to bring back a, almost like a symbol of the Veyron development. No? Veyron and Grand Sport had these aluminum hoops uh, in the back. And this is a modern interpretation of those two hoops in, in carbon fiber doing and creating all the cooling performance through their intake, but also the rollover hoop because we had to decide for worldwide homologation on this project, meaning rollover, side impact, uh, pedestrian impact, pendulum, to homologate this all around the world, yeah. uh, comes with this car, which was strenuous for us in feasibility for this car, but I think uh, that's an extra asset and extra value for it. Right, great. So I'd like to talk about the rear because this is where I think this car looks properly distinctive. You've got the X-shaped tail lights that we've seen on the Belide in the past. Uh, talk us through the design details here. Well, probably from this view, you see that your eye really concentrates on this X graphic and this fascinated us about the Bolide, this possibility that we had there just to bring that point home, so powerful. To translate something like this onto a production car uh, is a completely different game. Mm -hmm because here you have regulations, you have impact regulations. On a Bugatti, you have temperature uh, feasibility needs. Uh, the 1600 horsepower uh, releasing the air and then creating a tail light uh, that withstands all that temperature is a challenge in itself. Yeah. But we learned a lot from the projects Cento Dieci, but also Divo, and that allowed us this feasibility interpretation of the, of the Bolide rear end. Right, okay. And obviously you can see, if you go up close, this giant diffuser tunnel here. Now, what's the reasoning behind that? Because it looks very clean, this surface here. There's yeah. no big wing, but obviously it looks like this is doing most of the work, downforce-wise. Yes, yes and no. This is also a performance element for cooling purposes. Okay. So everything traveling through here. And down here, A, yes, you're right, it's about the diffuser performance. Mm -hmm. So that the diffuser really starts to kick up after the turbos there. But this also has a secondary purpose. Here it also catches the worldwide pendulums, US and European Union. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, instead of a crossbar beam, we're catching all the forces here uh, with the diffuser. Ah, okay, so that's part of the crash structure then. Yes. That's very, very right. clever. Wow, okay. So obviously, the end of the W16, it's been with Bugatti since 2005, the original Veyron. What is next for Bugatti? What are we gonna see from you guys coming up after this? Hmm. Well, first it was important for us that we go full circle now with this yeah. development and that this car also has a resemblance to the very first cars, to the Veyron, for mm -hmm. example. Next will certainly not be a Me Too product of some sort mm -hmm. because our overall brand claim is, if comparable, it no longer is Bugatti. But it's a little bit too early to talk about this. Okay, no worries. Yeah, okay. thanks very much, Keen. Great Thank to you. talk to you. Thank you. Likewise. Great. So Akim isn't too keen to talk about what's coming up next, but we already know that the next generation of Bugatti will still revolve around a combustion engine, albeit heavily assisted by a hybrid element. Fully electric models are also on the horizon, but whatever comes next, Bugatti will need to pull off something very special to succeed the mighty W16.